I know for sure the things I'm saying are true. They're changing my voice. I care about people. I'm not racist. I was engaged to a white woman who looks kind of Jewish. I have a cousin who's a Jew. Um, my mom's white. I'm not racist. Okay, I'm mixed. Okay. Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. To the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies. To silence the foe and the adventure. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. Now some people say that people are above the angels, they're not. Okay, angels are purified holy objects, uh, holy ideas rather than objects, holy uh, beings. Okay, people are just people trying to get to heaven at best and if they don't try hard and they don't obey God to me, they don't get there. You have made them rulers over the works of your hands. You have put any, everything under their feet. All flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. So again, the sun is one of the works of God's hands. God gave man dominion over the earth, okay? Not over the angels in heaven, okay? The birds in the sky, in this context at least, does not refer to the angels in heaven. All right, Psalm 9. So that, that Psalm 8 proves, again, Psalm 18, Psalm 19, Psalm 24, Psalm 8, and the saying that you know them by their fruits, by their works, their deeds, okay? And, of course, we're going over the scriptures where he says, judge, uh, you know, deal with me according to, you know, my integrity, my righteousness, and so on and so forth. We're going to get into that shortly. All right, Psalm 9. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you. Why? Because they fail in principle. All victories are in principle and in the spirit of righteousness. Okay? For you have upheld my right and my cause, sitting enthroned as the righteous judge. Sitting enthroned as the righteous judge. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. All the nations are wrong. It's become one with God, not with patriotism of a nation or left right middle paradigm or cults or the military the police one with god and transcend these things and trample on them okay you have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked you have blotted out their name forever and ever endless ruin has take overtaken my enemies you have uprooted their cities even the memory of them has perished okay so once you get to the spiritual realm these people are just thrown into eternal fire okay the Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the people with equity. This this part is key. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the peoples with equity. The parable of the ten minas. When God looks at, with all due respect, the whites, the Jews, LGBT community, other black people, Hispanics, Islanders, Asians, Muslims, you know, Semites, you name it, okay? He sees my righteousness goes beyond them. God rules with righteousness. He judges equally. He says this guy and his family has outdone everyone else. He is the anointed. He's the last one possible. That's the divine verdict. Okay. Verse 9. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. It gets confusing. In Psalm 89, it says that the enemies of David won't oppress him. They won't oppress him spiritually, right? The idea that he's superimposed on. Okay, but they're going to, you know, all wish to live in godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Jesus was persecuted. John the Baptist, Stephen the Martyr, what happened? Okay, so the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing the praises of the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers. He does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. So they're supposed to proclaim God's glory in me. The king said, this guy's the king. God has made this guy the top martial arts ever. This is a command from God and they're not keeping it. You know by their works, they don't obey God through me. They don't proclaim this, that they're guilty. Okay. He does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. There we go. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death that I may declare your praises in the gates of daughter Zion and there rejoice in your salvation. Obviously, I've been, you know, I've been lifted up from birth, okay? Because whoever leaves the upright along a wrong path will fall into their own trap of the blameless will receive a good inheritance. It's in Proverbs, I believe. Anyway, the nations have fallen into the pit they have dug, right? Digging their own ditch. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden, right? They thought they could set me up, right? Set, right? Set the stage, set me up, set the deity, okay? The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The Lord is known, is known, is known, right? The works, right? The Lord is known by his acts of justice, so are his faithful. 
The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. The wicked go down to the realm of the dead. All the nations that forget God. Remember earlier it made clear that it was all the nations. God rebukes the nations. All the nations. And all the nations are wicked. And they're going down to the realm of the dead. All the nations that forget God. And I'm the redeemer. Without me, they are just going down to the realm of the dead. But God, and they have to obey God through me before I die. But God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. Arise, Lord. Do not let morals triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, Lord. Let the nations know they are only mortal. So these people are only mortal. Their offspring are only mortal. Without me, they are but dust. They are but chaff blown before the wind. Okay, their offspring will be done after I'm gone. Okay, unless they're, they obey God through me. Okay, their offspring. Because they need a living redeemer. The living God. Okay. So... What you see is I cannot redeem their offspring after I'm gone. Stop reproducing. Luke 23, Paul's letters, do not reproduce no matter what. Tubes tied, you have to get an abortion. Okay, better the flesh dies than, than the child has it reaches the point where it attains a soul and its soul is thrown in eternal fire. Okay, like father, like son. Okay, there's a lot of reasons why it works this way. You can give your kids AIDS, you know, and that's a possibility. And that's what you should do, but that's a possibility. Okay, and it's so it is with this idea. Okay, you could also screw them up forever. Okay, it's just, you know, you can make it so you can't have kids. You can make it so your kids are born deformed. You know, that which you do does affect your offspring. Okay, all right. Okay, so, but God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. Arise, Lord, do not let morals triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, Lord. Let the nations know they are only mortal. Psalm 10, and it's part of what the quote-unquote war on terror is. It's part of them all coming together to play a sick game to keep me from being known and to keep people from be, having the fear of God. It's very sick, but that is what they're doing. Look at all the Satanists and the witches ever. Look at all the racists on the right, crazy people on the left. You'll see real fast that I'm right. Psalm 10. Okay, after this, I'll take a break, you know, you know, I'm being fumed and uh, the phone's getting hot and there's a lot of things to consider. Okay. Psalm 10. Why, Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? Them saying it, not me. I don't question God. In his arrogance, the wicked man hunts down the weak who are caught in the schemes he devises. He boasts about the cravings of his heart. He blesses the greedy and reviles the Lord. In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. His ways are always prosperous. Your laws are rejected by him. He sneers at all his enemies. He says to me, nothing will ever shake me. He swears no one will ever do me harm. His mouth is full of lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. First and foremost, this is the rich, right? They think they're above, you know, getting harmed and in eternal punishment. They just, oh, they're just having fun and they're, they're idiots, okay? Eight, he lies in wait near the villages. From the ambush, he murders the innocent. His eyes watch in secret for his victims. Like a lion in cover, he lies in wait. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and drags them off in his net. His victims are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. He says to himself, God will never notice. He covers his face and never sees. Arise, Lord, lift up your hand, O God. Do not forget the helpless. Why does the wicked man revile God? Why does he say to himself, he won't call me to account? But you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider the, the, their grief and take it in hand. The victims commit themselves to you. You are the helper of the fatherless, right? Those who do. Okay. Break the arm of the wicked man. Call the evildoer to account for his wickedness that, that would not otherwise be found out. So break the arm spiritually. Right. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his land. You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry, defending the fatherless and the oppressed so that mere earthly mortals will never again strike terror. Okay. So again, God judges the people of equity. Don't forget that. Okay. This is key, okay? Um, the, the arrogant man who's hunting down the weak is caught in his own scheme because he lives by the false principles, okay? Um, they're like lions, you know, roaring lions, like for, uh, First Peter 5, 8 or whatever it was. The devil's a roaring lion, okay? They talk about God lifting up his hand to punish them, so it's a martial art hand. It's a hand of punishment, of marshalling and punishment. Martial is marital scramble, martial is to order, to arrange. It's also when you say that out of principle, no one can be married, no one can reproduce and be right with God. And that time has come. Okay. And it says to defend the fatherless and the oppressed. Okay. Don't team up with the neo-colonialist oppressor. Don't team up with the left-right middle paradigm. Don't team up with anyone else. Only obey God through me. Because they're controlled opposition ninnies and what have you. Okay. Psalm 11. In the Lord I take refuge. How, can, how then can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. 
When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on earth. His eyes examine them. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. He hates with a passion. On the wicked he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. The upright will see his face. So notice it's using the word, the, the, wind, figur excuse me, the wind figuratively. Okay, a scorching wind, right? Fiery coals, burning sulfur, the sun parallels, what have you. For the Lord loves righteousness. The Lord is righteous. He loves justice. The upright will see his face. Okay, Psalm 12. Help, Lord, for no one is faithful anymore. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. May the Lord silence all flattering lips and every boastful tongue. Those who say by our tongues we will prevail, our own lips will defend us. Who is Lord over us? Because the poor are plundered and the needy grown, I will now arise as the Lord. I will protect them from those. I will, I will protect them from those who will malign them. And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. You, Lord, will keep the needy safe. You will protect us forever from the wicked who freely strut about when what is vile is honored by the human race. So instead of me having the honor, you know, them honoring me by presenting themselves, right? They honor the wicked, those who strut about, and they honor what is vile. Okay, neo-colonialism, liberalism, conservatism, what have you. They worship the devil. Okay, in the last chapter, you see the marshaling source of God, right? The sun, the fire of God, the presence of God. They can't stand it. They try to turn back, but they go to a lake of fire. There's nowhere to go because the spiritual realm is dominated by righteousness. This is just a material realm to test. There's no comfort and no relief from God's presence when they die. All right. Here we go down to, remember, uh, the refined, right? Refined, refinement, repetition, refining, right? Martial art principle, life principle. Psalm 13. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me, right, in the worldly manner? Look on me and answer, Lord, my God, give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. How and when? He says, if this person sleeps in death, right? It's a Psalm of David. If David sleeps in death, the enemy will have overcome him, but not if he doesn't, right? And my foes will rejoice when I fall, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. Okay, Psalm 14. Okay, so again, Psalm 13 says he wants the light of God in his eyes. He wants the spirit in his heart. The eyes are the window of the soul. He wants the light of God in his soul, justice, righteousness, true love, uh, you know, obeying God through the divine order, right? Order, discipline, right? Determination, the martial art principles, moral precision, universal pinpoint of moral precision, focus, moral intensity. Psalm 14. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one, because these are the people of the earth, not me, who I'm always communing with God, moving through the heavens. I'm with the angels. I'm with God. The kingdom of heaven is with me. Okay. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on the Lord, but they are. But there they are, overwhelmed with dread. For God is present in the company of the righteous. What I just said. Uh, you evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. All oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord restores His people. Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. So again, the evildoers are dumb. They know nothing. They're devouring their own offspring. What have you? Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent, who may live on your holy mountain, the one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, right? Who, who despises a vile person. Remember, hating the wicked is part of being holy. Who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent, who does these things will never be shaken. Whoever does these things will never be shaken, right? Be righteous, despise the wicked, do not cheat me, do not do me wrong, okay? In a sense, all the inhabitants of the earth are neighbors to each other, okay? None of you are supposed to cheat me out of my right to leave. 